Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to my channel. Um, if you've been here before, then welcome back. Um, if you've not been here before, then welcome. So I've, uh, so I've been getting a few messages um, asking me about phrasing, how I phrase different phrasing ideas and things like that. Um, um, Ankit, am I pronouncing that? Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I know so you left a few comments. Um, asking me to do some phrasing videos, so here it is. Sorry, I've just finally got around to doing it. Um, guys, if you have any ideas for videos, just let me know in the comments. I'll try and get to them when I can. Um, but yeah, man, so here it is. So um, I'm, I just came up with my top five, you know, phrasing ideas that I like to do. Um, now, some of these I've got, you know, I've taken from different guitar players and just sort of picked them up from different people. Uh, over the years, um, so the the credit's not uh, mine. Um, so I didn't invent this stuff, um, but I use it a lot in my playing, and that's kind of how I develop my own style. So I've had players in the past say, you know, it's you shouldn't be lying on a bunch of other people's stuff because it's it's going to um, you're not going to get your own style. You're not going to get your own nuances. You're not going to get your own thing going on. Like I am the, like, I give the complete opposite advice to that. I always say, learn from as many different people as you can. So, um, and then you put it into sort of a melting pot, mix it all together, right? And then hopefully what comes out will be your own style, your own thing. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what, um, what I'm going for with this. Also, one thing I will say, and I think I said this on my channel before is that I am not interested in sounding like a guitar, <laughs> particularly. Um, I The only way I can describe what I want to sound like is like a synthesizer keyboard slash saxophone from space that's blasting out crazy arpeggios and stuff. Um, imagine a digitalized video game 8-bit saxophone is kind of what I want to sound like. <laughs> um, kind of crazy, I know, but um, I love keyboard and I play keyboard a little bit, but um, I wasn't great at it, so guitar is kind of what I was drawn to more than that. Um, I kind of connected with it a little bit easier, but I don't really want to sound like the traditional shred guitar kind of sound, even though I may have sounded like that in the past, because I do love that stuff still, but I kind of want to have my own vibe with tone. Anyway, we're getting, to, getting I digress, we want to go into phrasing here. Um, Alright, so the first thing um, that I really like to do is hit a wrong note and bring it into a note within the key, sort of diatonically. Now, what I, now I use the quote symbol for wrong note because we don't really, um, no note is really wrong. We can just be out of the key or outside, right? Um, so just for example, okay, so you, let's just say I have this shape, okay? I'm just gonna go 10, 8, 7 on the two high strings. Okay, if I, I can play it like this, this is really boring, right? Nice and boring, right? But we can give it a little bit more color because we can use this outside note here, right? So this seven here, if we're in E minor. Um, so if I can use a, a note that's maybe non-diatonic to the key and slide it downwards, right? Right, and but I can slide from high to low, or I can slide low to high, right? So when I went to this B here, right? I slid from B flat into B really abruptly. You don't want to hang out on these notes for too long. I mean, well, depending on what you're going for, but I just like to pass them really quickly. That's how you get that. You can do it twice, you can do little doubles. I'll do it on the low string too. There I went B flat. That same B flat. 
Check this out. Oh, sorry, I didn't listen to you. Right, so instead of just going, I've gone. Just makes everything a little bit, um, a little bit more exciting, a little bit more posh. I don't know. Um, I just like the sound of it. And um, so, and so, so that's the first thing I might do when I'm phrasing. And I might practice that just by outlining my three note per string scale. So, say if I have like Dorian, for example, this Dorian shape. I might play around the outside and bring the notes back into the scale, right? So instead of just going, I might go. Right, so I'm sliding in from the outside and bringing it into that scale shape. If I take my major scale shape, instead of just going, I kind of go. I'm sliding on the inside too, so instead of just going, I can go. I don't do this for like every note I play, it's just kind of when I feel like giving it a little bit of a. giving it a little bit of a vibe, cool vibe. So I can go. Okay, so there's the first thing. Phrasing tip number two. Um, you may notice when I play some of these notes, I might go like, I might go like a. Da, 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 the tiny little bend there, right? So if we just take this idea of 10, 8, 7 again, I'm gonna do an outside slide, but I'm gonna go. Do two of them, and on the second one, I'm gonna go give that a tiny little. Da, da, da. It's all about the timing, too. Like, I did it downwards that time, I bent down to the floor, back up. Okay, so phrasing tip number three, I might, um, and I like this from watching guys like Rick Graham, who's just the greatest ever. Um, I'm sure every one of you knows exactly who that is if you're on this channel. If not, go and check him out immediately. He's just unbelievable. Um, so I was watching him do it, and I noticed like it, pretty much everyone does this nowadays. Um, I absolutely love it. It just sounds, it just sounds good. Um, it's the same idea as like going, taking an outside note and, and really abruptly sliding it into your diatonic note. Um, however, if we slide into our diatonic note really abruptly outside and bring it back, you can get a really cool vibe, really cool thing going on with it. Right, so I'm sure you've heard that like a bunch, like all the, all the, all the guitar players are doing it these days. Um, but if I, my ring finger, if I go on seven, slide up to nine really abruptly up to 10, bring it back, 7, 9, up to 10, back to 9, and I'm just pulling off to 7. So what I might do is play up my scale and just practice this, right? Right, so eventually it becomes second nature. I can't help but do this right now. You could make me improvise and put like have someone with a gun to my head and be like, do not do that slot. I would do that slot because I can't help it. I just do it all the time now. It's like, it's annoying, right? <laughs> um, anyway, I love them. All right, phrasing tip number four. We're gonna go do the chromat do some chromaticism with our outside notes too. Notice how there's, um, with a lot of this phrasing stuff, 
we're kind of using our wrong notes, our outside notes, to kind of really bring in some tension. Um, because music's just tension and release, right? It's the same thing as when, when we play a note with vibrato, we're bending the note in and out of tune. But what we're doing here is we're playing a wrong note and bringing it in back into tune, but we're doing it in such a way that it sounds really classy, right? And the way that I think about this is I think about a, um, I think, think about saxophone, right? I want to sound, like I said, I want to sound like a sax, kind of. Um, but actually going back to that quick slide and, and then the, to number four where we slide and then do the quick, shake up and then back down again um so going back to this kind of idea really quick um i don't know if any of you know the i got a song called the drug me is you that i did a long long time ago um came out 2011 but i do that idea where i slide up i think it was like if it here i go 17 to 19 with my first finger you can also hammer you don't have to like slide with your ring finger you can also go like this Hammer on a wrong note, pull off, slide back, right? Now I was doing that for years and years and years. Right, but it's just whatever you like the sound of. Or you, you could, there's three different ways you can do it. You can go hammer and pull, you can do the slide, or you can do the, um, or you can do a quick little bend. I do them all depending on, normally depending on my finger position of where I am in the, in the solo or on the fretboard and I'll kind of switch out my finger position. Sometimes it might feel right to go, if I'm on my first finger I might go, just because I don't have that, I don't have that finger to slide back to, right, if I'm on my first finger. So if I'm on my first finger and I want to get a slower I go, okay. Are we on number five? I've lost count. So number five is, uh, or number four, I don't even remember anymore, whatever, um, is chromaticism. Okay, so let's go back to the example of this Dorian scale, right? What I might do is dance in between the incorrect or undyed or chromat chromatic notes within that shape. So I might just map out diatonic one, then I might map it, map out the in-between notes. Maybe just four notes on each string. Right here on the two middle strings, I'm just going um, nine, eight, seven, five, right? So I'm not, I'm not too worried about getting every single chromatic note in there. Because if I have that in my muscle memory, It's gonna, it's gonna start coming out in my soloing, right? And you can use it in really subtle ways. For example, if I hear, if I go to like the my uh, my my major seven note, get okay, a really nice, cool, cool little bit of tension there. I can. Go down every single note, and if I if I pull this off, hopefully um, nicely, you can get a really cool vibe with it. Right? Um, yeah, so chromaticism, I use it all the time, and I get asked pretty often, like some of the the f more f kind of fusion-y lines that I do, my legato. I'm just screwing about, I'm not really thinking about it, I'm just kind of using this chromatic, chromatic mapping idea, um, just to mess around and just come up with some cool sounding stuff. Um, what else do I do? Yeah, so another tip I guess would just be, don't don't neglect your pentatonic. So I, I hear so many metalheads and like metal guitar players like, oh, I don't care about the pentatonics, I don't want to sound like a 70s, like, rocker guy, or, like, do dad solos or whatever. And, like, I get it, like, that's fine if that's not your thing, but get some, uh, get your pentatonics down because they always sound good, and you don't have to have that kind of dad rock thing going on with it. I love that stuff, but you don't have to have that going on with it because you can make, with your pentatonic scales, you can always make it sound really tasty, like, really easily. So we're going back to this example, right? Um, the Dorian shape. I know on top of this I can outline. Right, that shape. 
They always sound, they always, your pentatonics always sound good, right? If I just kind of improv. Right, so there's my three note per string, I, like kind of shape I do. Right, go into some pentatonics. Right? It all sounds cool. Because, yeah, I started here with these three note per string shapes. And then I went into my pentatonic ideas. Cool, well, I hope those tips have helped you. Those are some ideas I use all the time, right, in my playing. So hopefully that kind of makes you realize some of the stuff that I do and hopefully that helps you. Um, I've been thinking of doing a video pack um, just on phrases and just like real, some really nice melodic phrases kind of stuff that I would typically do. Um, would you be into that? If you are, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely start making one. If you guys are into that, I'll definitely put that together and make a video pack for that and, and help you guys with your phrasing stuff and, and hopefully give your uh, improv a little boost too. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up. Please think about subscribing. And also, if you go to the link below, JackieVincentOfficial.com, um, there will be a pop-up and you can subscribe to my mailing list and you can see uh, promos and, um, you know, find out when I have new stuff coming out so you can keep be kept in the loop um, and get offers to my store and stuff like that. Um, also, I do have some video packs on my online store if you want to go to jackievincentofficial.com forward slash shop. Um, I have some cool video packs on there like Lethal Legato, uh, one called Lethal Legato that has similar phrases to kind of what I've been doing today so you can check that out. Um, ultimate Speed Picking, Sweep Tapping Mechanics, Advanced Tapping Phrases and Extreme Shred Techniques. So I have a bunch of shred packs that I've been kind of releasing here and there. Um, and I think some people, uh, some players out there have been really enjoying them. So if you guys enjoy them, I'll keep, if you guys enjoy them, I will keep making them. So also guys, I have a secret song giveaway. All you have to do is click the link below and uh, it will take you to subscribe to my mailing list. And once you do that, you will get emailed a secret song <laughs> that you can enjoy and check out. If you do want to work one on one with me and uh, work on your guitar playing and if you want me to kind of guide you and show you how I develop my technique, how I develop my skills and my certain methods uh, for building a practice schedule and working to get you to your the goals that you want to get to. I've had a lot of success with uh, several students over the last um, you know over the last several years so um, if you would like to work one-on-one -on -one with me I won't be offering Skype lessons forever but for now I do teach on Wednesdays and Sundays so definitely uh, send an email to jackielessons at gmail.com um, you can also leave me a comment below all right guys much love I hope this has helped you go subscribe to my mailing list and peace out <laughs>